We now move to a different subject, oxidation reduction, also known as redox reactions. In precipitation reactions that we've discussed earlier in this chapter, cations and anions come together to form an insoluble ionic compound. In neutralization reactions that we just finished discussing, H plus ions and OH ions come together to form H2O. Now we want to consider a third kind of reaction, one in which electrons are transferred from one reactant to another. Such reactions are called oxidation reactions or redox reactions. So redox reactions are different from precipitation or neutralization reactions. What's occurring is electrons are being moved from one species to another. And thus what we end up seeing is molecules changing in charge going from the left side of the reaction to the right. Now before getting into this, I want to teach you two simple mnemonics that I've learned for remembering how to distinguish between oxidation and reduction. Mnemonic one is this. Leo the lion says, grr. What this stands for is losing electrons is oxidation and gaining electrons is reduction. Now if you don't like that, you can also remember oil rig. Oxidation is losing and reduction is gaining. And before we can identify an oxidation reduction reaction, we must have a bookkeeping system of some kind, a way of keeping track of electrons gained by the substance being reduced and electrons being lost by the substance that is oxidized. The concept of oxidation numbers, which are also called oxidation states, was devised as a way of doing this. To determine an atom's oxidation number or oxidation state, we have to use the following rules. Step one, for an atom that's found in its elemental form, which is any element that isn't bonded to any other kinds of elements but itself, its oxidation number is always zero. Examples include H2, O2, sodium by itself, or P4. These are uncharged substances that are only bonded to other elements of itself. Oxidation number, oxidation state for these guys is always zero. Step two, for monatomic ions, that is, species that have charges, the oxidation number is the same as the ion's charge. So for K+, plus, its oxidation state is plus 1. For S2-, minus, its oxidation state is 2-, minus, and so forth, and so on. Step 3. Remember that nonmetals usually have negative oxidation numbers, although they can sometimes be positive. Let me show you some of the nuances in this area. The oxidation number of oxygen is almost always negative 2, except for in peroxides like H2O2, where its oxidation number is negative 1. The other exception I make is if oxygen is all by itself bonded to other oxygen atoms, as in O2, for example, in which its oxidation state is, of course, 0, as we delineated in the previous slide. The oxidation number of hydrogen is almost always plus 1 when it's bonded to nonmetals, and minus 1 when it's bonded to metals. The oxidation number of fluorine is always minus 1, except, of course, when you just are talking about fluorine bonded to itself, as in F2 fluorine gas, in which case its oxidation number is 0, as delineated in the previous slide. Now, the other halogens have oxidation numbers of negative 1 in most cases. When bonded to oxygen, however, they have positive oxidation states. Step 4 is the sum of the oxidation numbers of all atoms in a neutral compound is 0. The sum of the oxidation numbers in a polyatomic ion equals the charge of that ion. Whew. So all of these steps can be summarized by the following chart. Any uncharged element that isn't bonded to any other elements has an oxidation number equal to 0. All ions' oxidation numbers are basically the charge of the ion. And any time you have a nonmetal, its oxidation number is usually negative. Oxygen's oxidation number is usually minus 2, except in peroxides like H2O2, where it's minus 1. Hydrogen is plus 1 when bonded to nonmetals, and minus 1 when bonded to metals. Fluorine is always minus 1. Other halogens are usually minus 1, but can be positive if bonded to oxygen. And lastly, we need to remember that the sum of the oxidation numbers for all atoms in a neutral compound is 0. Now, if your compound is not neutral, then their sum has to add up to equal whatever the charge of the compound is. Which brings us to a wonderful problem. Determine the oxidation number of the indicated element in each of the following substances. As I've done in the past, I won't do every single one of these examples for you, but we'll do a few to let you see how it's done. So here are our four problems. I would like to begin, firstly, by looking at problem A. 
asking us for the oxidation number of sulfur in barium sulfate. So in doing a problem like this, I like to separate out each element in my compound and create two rows beneath it, one that says individual charge and another that says total charge. We then begin with what we know. From the table that I showed in an earlier slide, you'll remember that oxygen's oxidation number is almost always negative 2. So I can write that there as its individual charge in this molecule. Now, because barium is in column 2 of the periodic table, you can imagine that in order to feel like a noble gas, barium is going to want to lose 2 electrons and thereby shift 2 effective columns to the left to its nearest noble gas neighbor. It will therefore have a charge or oxidation state of plus 2. Now, the question is, what in the world is sulfur's oxidation state? In order to answer that, we have to go down to the total charge line. Now you'll note that because there are four individual oxygens in this compound, and each one of them has an oxidation state or number of negative 2, the overall negative charge of oxygen comes to negative 8. Bariums, of course, stays the same because there's only one barium, and its charge is plus 2. What charge does sulfur have to have? Well, it has to have a charge that when added together with plus 2 and negative 8 gives an overall charge for the molecule of 0. What number is that? Well, of course, it's positive 6. Thus, sulfur's oxidation state or oxidation number in this compound is plus 6. Here's another one. What is the oxidation number of cobalt in this compound? Once again, we have two lines, individual charge and total charge. And we start with what we know. Oxygen almost always likes to have an oxidation state of negative 2. Lithium is in column 1 of the periodic table. Thus, it's going to want to lose one electron to feel like its nearest noble gas neighbor, giving it an oxidation state of plus 1. What is cobalt's oxidation state? We'll figure that out momentarily, keeping in mind that each oxygen has an oxidation state of negative 2, and there are two of them. Thus, the overall negative charge of both oxygens combined is negative 4. Lithium is all by itself with a plus 1 oxidation state. Thus, it has an overall charge still of plus 1. Cobalt's oxidation state then has to be a number that when added to positive 1 and negative 4 will give an overall total of 0, which is the charge for this entire compound. What number is that? It's plus 3. Thus, cobalt's oxidation state in this compound is positive 3.